Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Let's take a look at Romeo Dobbs, the senior wide receiver for Nevada, top wide receiver in this, uh, you know, on this team, big time deep threat who can run nice routes, short and intermediate routes. He knows how to break very well. And there's a couple things I want to show you on this particular play. First is, you know, he plays with a nice level of intensity, very quick. He can drop his weight. He can open his hips with the little karaoke turn. He also runs the false acceleration break very well, which I'll show in a, in a film room that I do that's a longer analysis of dubs later on this year where you're going to see him really drop his weight, set up a, an inside-looking break, but then break outside with it. It's a fantastic technique. But what's really notable here as we set up what we're going to look at next is how he can extend for the ball. See how he catches that ball with his arms extended outward, makes the catch at helmet level a little above, doesn't really leave his feet too much, continues to catch the ball in stride and get downhill, get 16 yards on this play. I want you to keep this in mind because he actually has some difficulties with how to use his hands when catching the football. So seeing this particular play is very important because it gives you an idea of maybe what the issue is, what the source, the root of the issue is with his hand positions that are very inconsistent and prevent him from really being a top prospect in my eyes at this point of the draft cycle, which is very early. Let's take a look. This is going to be just a quick throw out to Dubs, and he's going to make the catch. And you see him here, I mean, no problem securing the ball, getting downhill. It's only a two-yard gain. But I want you to see his hands here. And this is notable. You can see he has his hands low. They're kind of put in a position where it looks like he's waiting for an underhand catch. The ball's arriving basically at that numbers level between the chest and the waist. And this can be one of the more confusing areas for a receiver to figure out what which hands technique he should use, underhand or overhand. And really the best rule of thumb is that when the ball's arriving and you are in a position where you can extend to catch the ball, you always try to do that whenever you can because you get more control over it. You catch the ball earlier and you can move it away from a defender if you need be. Now, he's in open space here when he catches this ball. And as you can see, as he catches it, he has one hand high, one hand low, and he's kind of sandwiching the slapping his hands onto it. And he and he's kind of has a mixed hands position here. So they're not uniform and close together to where they meet the ball, and then he can use his fingertips to secure and stop the spiral. Instead, he's kind of clapping onto it. And as a result of that, he still catches the ball, but he lets it into his frame. There's more room for error with this type of catch, more um chances for this pat for him to end up having this catch process being disrupted either with his own lack of technique or issues with the way his hands are being used or from a defender and you're going to see why this matters when it comes to contested plays he has difficulty knowing really how to use his hands to go up and win the ball early you know, he does a great job of kind of fading here and getting the defender to run underneath him on a ball that's underthrown and then come back into the frame to undercut the defender to catch the ball. It's a great strategy. But look at his hands. He's extending. His hands are far apart. There's not control or precision with his hands to meet the ball. It's also reaching up underhand in terms of the position rather than turning back to the ball, you know, like leaping and turning back so that he can attack with overhand position with his fingers in that triangle type of um, formation that you want to have where you've got the webbing with the, fing with the uh, index fingers, meaning instead he tries to clap onto that ball and he just completely misses it. And it's just a really lost opportunity. This is a player who runs good routes, has the speed, plays with intensity, understands how to track a football, can make catches with his hands, but he hasn't figured out how to use his hands 
in all of the different scenarios of routes and coverage types that he's going to face. And that's something he really needs to work on here because this is great in terms of how he tracks and sets up the ability to adjust. But the hands are too far apart. They're underhand. Now he's got to clap on the ball. And when he tries to clap on it, that's where the room for error comes. And you can see he drops it right there. He just makes it tougher on himself. And, and in fact, because he doesn't turn back to the ball and he extends this way, the defender's still in the play. So even though he has the defender overrun the play, because his chest is still facing the defender, the defender can still reach back and disrupt this, or at least disrupt his concentration, because he has to have a higher level of concentration and skill to, to clap onto a football with your hands apart like this. You know, when you have the right techniques, you're more efficient. It makes your job easier. And if you can turn back to the defender while you leap and use the correct hand position, now your back's to the defender and he cannot disrupt your concentration. That's a difficult... I mean, you can see he gets his hands on the ball, but he's clapping here and he's catching the, the back end of the ball. The front end of the ball is already through his hands. It's hard to see, but that's, you know... that. Trust me, that's basically what you're looking at here. And that's what happens. And this is the difference between Romeo Dubs being a top prospect in my eyes because he has the route potential of a top prospect. He has the athletic ability that is puts him in that range. But he it, it comes down to catching the ball. That's what you got to do. I mean, getting open is great. That's a big part of the battle. But if you can't catch the ball after doing all these good things, then this is the difference between being a really good college receiver and being a guy who these catches are the expectation in the NFL. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Mount Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mountwaldmanrsp.com.